I'm here in my parents' living room. I'm shooting on my iPad. I came down here for Thanksgiving on the Vamoose bus down from New York City. And yeah, this is going to be question and answer time number three. I need more. I had to get my music theory buddy to help me wrap my head around this, lol. Are there any examples of counterpoint or counter melodies in today's music? Great question. The example that I like to use is The Weeknd's Can't Feel My Face. Check it out. Hi, Mr. Neely. Any chance that you could do a video talking about the background process of constructing, say, a Sungazer tune? Maybe a few highlight picks around production and composition. Super cool stuff going on there. Thanks. I already did that kind of video already with the excuse me kind sir, but what the devil's it that you're doing here videos for Sun Gazer, like kind of that compositional process video. I'm gonna do a similar video for a big band project of mine called Exigence. Uh, we did this recording last year at this place called Roulette in Brooklyn, of uh, this big band project that I was doing where I was combining electronic music, metal, uh, contemporary jazz, big band music, all the sorts of cool stuff. We had like three Ewees in the saxophone section. It was crazy. We had a visual projection going on. Um, you can see the videos of that concert uh, online. I posted them about six months ago, but I'm gonna do a compositional process video for them very, very soon. Stay tuned. Hey Adam, how can you be so sure about the key only by hearing the first note of the bass line? I was wondering the same thing. Did you listen to the texture of the bass or do you have perfect pitch? I actually got a lot of questions about this. It has a lot to do with the fact that I have a very good relative pitch. Not perfect pitch, I definitely do not have perfect pitch. So when I was first listening to the video, you can sort of see the wheels in my head sort of turning as I'm listening. Um, you can see the fact that I can hear the tonic pitch, but I don't know what the tonic pitch is. And as soon as I press the note D for on Sibelius, and up comes D, you hear the playback of the note D, and I can make the mental calculations of what that note D is to the tonic that I'm perceiving. And that ended up being uh, the relationship of a perfect fourth, so I can immediately know, using my theory knowledge, and also using the fact that I have a good relative pitch, oh, the tonic is A. Okay, so it's in the key of A. That much I figured out. And that sort of thing, in my opinion, is way, way more important and way more useful than actually having perfect pitch because it's more, you know, you could see it's more uh, practical. Uh, but good questions. No, I had not listened to that song at all before I created the video. Great videos, man. Mind naming a few of your biggest influences as an arranger? I have a lot of influences, but the one that I really want to mention is Jim McNeely, who is my graduate school composition teacher. And Jim uh, taught me a lot of things, but the big thing that, that he taught me is that a composer's job is not to ask, may I, it's to ask, what if? And from what I got from that was to t uh, basically any idea you have, you really have to run with. You have to think about, well, what if this happens? Well, you know, I'm creating this bass line, but what if all of a sudden you have like five trumpets go blah, 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 and then there's like this bass line that goes back and forth, like, do, 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 blah, do, 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 blah, 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 do, 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 blah, do, blah, do, 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 blah, do, that, et cetera, ad infinitum, and to create the, as many ideas that you can with that initial sort of spark. Um, yeah, Jim was a huge influence on me, and uh, you should really check out his music if you haven't already. Uh, East Coast Blowout is a very important big band record he did with John Schofield. Um, the music of Paul Clay is a great album that he did, sort of based on paintings of the artist, the contemporary artist Paul Clay, um, Jim McNeely. And his name sounds very similar to mine. McNeely? Neely? Uh, he probably had a distant relative, like in... 17th century Scotland, like a sheep farmer or something like that. Hey Adam, I find all of this extremely interesting and useful for composing, so I was wondering if you know of any books that cover the subject in depth and thoroughly. Thanks in advance and have a great day. If you already have a strong basis in theory, you definitely should check out Vincent Persichetti's 20th Century Harmony. It's a great example of a descriptive book on composition because it, it really doesn't have any sort of pretense of knowing what's right and what's wrong. It's just simply, here are all these crazy techniques, do something with it. Um, and I love that, it's a great book. And yeah, I have a, I've sort of notated my copy to oblivion. You see all these notes on my, uh, my version of 20th Century Harmony. It's a lot of fun. Uh, also check out Ludmila Ulela's Contemporary Harmony. It's a little bit more more textbookish. I don't want to say I don't want to say pretentious, but it kind of is a little bit more pretentious. But there's some amazing stuff in there you really should check out if you ever want to sort of understand some more advanced compositional techniques. Would using a piezo pickup get the same effect? Yeah, I'd get a similar result. I kind of don't like piezo pickups because they have that sort of quacky, <laughs> disgusting sort of upper mid range that I don't like. Um, but it would it would be similar, especially if you blended it with the magnetic pickup. Somebody in the talk based forum suggested that you tape a dynamic mic capsule directly onto the body. I thought that was kind of a cool idea. I might try that sometime. 
Hey, Mr. Neely, quick question. What instrument, if any, would you like to learn apart from those you already know slash play? Drums. I suck at drums. I really want to be better at drums. I play a guitar, piano, and bass pretty well. Uh, gig on all three of them, but I would really love to know how to play drums a lot better than I do right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Th You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Made my cat hide. <sighs> I gotta tell you, that's probably the greatest compliment anybody's ever given to me. Could you do a video or series or something on Sibelius engraving? You have that locked down, man. The biggest comment I got in the last video was, man, Adam, you use Sibelius really quickly. And I've been using Sibelius 6 since about 2010. And yeah, I have gotten pretty quick at it, but even still compared to some people, I feel like I'm going like this. There's a jazz composer by the name of Miho Hazama, who I went to MSM with. And man, she, in addition to writing some amazing jazz compositions, she works really quickly on Sibelius. And the thing that I always like to think about is with your notational software, you kind of want it to have just be an extension of yourself the same way that when you're writing or typing or whatever, you're not really thinking too much about the nitty gritty in terms of like searching for menus and stuff. Um, I know I'm sounding like a Sibelius commercial right now, but once you use the, uh, learn the shortcuts with Sibelius, it, you, it's like speed demon. You go really, really quickly. And that's why I love Sibelius versus Finale or anything else. So use Sibelius. Anyway, that's been question and answer time with Adam Neely. I'm going to go eat some Thanksgiving dinner now. So yeah, stay tuned for more stuff on the channel.